Hello viewers, myself Pratap. Hope you're all well. Today's video is about the beautiful poem by Nisim Ezekiel named Night of the Scorpion. So, let's begin. So, first we will recite the poem Night of the Scorpion by Nisim Ezekiel. I remember the night my mother was stung by a scorpion. Ten hours of steady rain had driven him to crawl beneath a sack of rice. Parting with his poison flash of diabolic tail in the dark room, he risked the rain again. The peasants came like swarms of flies and buzzed the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. With candles and with lanterns throwing giant scorpion shadows on the mud-baked walls, they searched for him. He was not found. They clicked their tongues. With every movement that the scorpion made, his poison moves in mother's blood, they said. May he sit still, they said. May the sins of your previous birth be burned with tonight, they said. May your suffering decrease the misfortunes of your next birth, they said. May the sum of all evil balanced in this unreal world against the sum of good become diminished by your pain. May the poison purify your flesh of desire and of spirit of ambition, they said. And I sat around on the floor with my mother in the center, the piece of understanding on each face. More candles, more lanterns, more neighbors, more insects and the endless rain. My mother twisted through and through, groaning on a mat. My father, skeptic, rationalist, trying every curse and blessing, powder, mixture, herb and hybrid. He even poured a little paraffin upon the bite and toe and put a match to it. I watched the flame feeding on my mother. I watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with an incantation. After 20 hours, it lost its sting. My mother only said, Thank God the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. Next, we'll discuss about the Title of the poem Nisim Ezekiel's poem Night of the Scorpion presents an occurrence of a night which rained incessantly for 10 hours. The poet's mother was then stung by a poisonous scorpion. Due to continuous rainfall, the scorpion took shelter behind a sack of rice, stung her at an opportune moment and escaped. The sting was terrible and the poet's mother was suffering an acute pain. She twisted her body and rolled helplessly on a mat due to the unbearable pain. Such mishap of the night was caused by the poisonous scorpion. The neighbors, mainly the peasants, came like a swarm of flies. They eagerly came with candles and lanterns throwing light on the mud-baked walls to destroy the poison. They spared nothing, prayers, incantations and elaborate searches. Their motto was to detect the scorpion. Stop the spread of evil in it and quickening the cure of the stung woman. But all their efforts were in vain as the poisonous scorpion was not found. Finally, they sat around the suffering mother expressing the superstitious interpretations regarding the impact of the sting of the scorpion. They passed the rainy night in such jobs. The poet's father, a skeptic and a rationalist, kept himself busy with drugs, herbs and hybrid to provide relief to his wife. He spared nothing as he poured a little paraffin on the bite and toe and ignited it with a match. After 20 hours, the poet's mother was relieved of the poisonous scorpion sting. As the poem is all about the sting of the scorpion and the mad search for it by the neighbors and the family, so the title of the poem seems appropriate. Next, we'll talk about the central theme of the poem. In the poem, Night of the Scorpion, the poet tries to recall a night which rained incessantly for 10 hours. A scorpion took shelter behind a sack of rice and stung the poet's mother. Afterwards, it disappeared in the rainy night. The poet's mother suffered tremendously and her suffering was reported all over the village. The villagers, mostly peasants, came to the house and prayed to God to destroy the evil force. The search for the scorpion with candles and lanterns on the mud-baked walls, but in vain. 
the villagers later delivered the superstitious observations that the scorpion sting might help to burn the sins of her previous birth, reduce the misfortunes of her next birth, and the sum of all evil balanced in this unreal world against the sum of good become diminished by her pains. The poisonous sting might also help to purify her flesh of desire and spirit of ambition. They were finding a remedy to cure the illness. The woman twisted her body and groaned on a mat with tremendous pain. The poet's father had no such interest in such superstitious beliefs and fears and tried to provide relief to his wife on medical lines. Some holy persons came who recited holy spells to cure the power of evil. However, after 20 hours, the woman was relieved of the poisonous scorpion sting. She was thankful to God that the scorpion had not affected her children. Next, we will talk about the critical appreciation of the poem, Night of the Scorpion. The poem, Night of the Scorpion, one of the finest poems in the recent Indian English literature, was published in his book, The Exact Name, in 1965. Ezekiel belongs to a Bene Israel family which migrated to India generations ago. Thus, he was substantially eliminated from the core of the Indian ethos, life and society. And he was aware of his alienation. The alienation theme is thus central to Ezekiel's work and colors his entire poetic universe, except his popular masterpiece, Night of the Scorpion which narrates a tale situated in an Indian background, portrayed beautifully in an objective style. The central theme of Nisim Ezekiel's poem, Night of the Scorpion, revolves around the theme of good versus evil, coexistence of spirituality, rationality, and skepticism. It portrays the superstitions present within the rural background of the then Indian society. Instead of all these local themes, a mother's universal selfless love is dominant in the poem. The poem is confined within a village setting where the outlook is very traditional. The poem starts with the poet's experience of a night when his mother was stung by a scorpion. The word scorpion signifies that the setting is in a rural area as they are rarely found in the cities and scorpion bites can be fatal in a rural area due to lack of medical facilities. That day it was raining continuously for 10 long hours, which caused the scorpion to crawl and hide behind a sack of rice, from where it stung the woman. The reference of a sack of rice also indicates of a rural Indian household. After injecting the poison, its venomous devilish tail flashed in the dark room, before it disappeared into the rain again. The scorpion's tail is compared to a sword that is sparkling with the thirst of life after its attack. The word wrist here signifies that the rain was not helpful for the scorpion. Indirectly, it also reminds us of the grave danger that is looming upon the poet's mother. The word dark room also signifies that the poem is set in a poor Indian house. Hearing the news of the incident, the peasants came to the poet's house in groups, like the swarms of flies. The simile, swarms of flies, compares the peasants coming to the poet's house in groups. They were buzzing the name of God several times to paralyze the evil one. Here, chanting of God's name is compared to the buzzing of the bees. The word evil one compares the scorpion to an evil force that has come to harm human beings. The peasants believed in the supernatural power of God who, with his good forces, could neutralize the evil effect of the poison of the scorpion. Their religious mindset is highlighted through these lines. The peasants came with candles and lanterns to the poet's house. The words candles and lanterns further reinforces that the setting is in a rural background. Their giant scorpion shadows were formed on the mud-baked walls due to the light. The word mud-baked walls also symbolizes the rural setting. The word giant scorpion shadows signifies the shadows of the neighbors due to the light formed on the mud-baked walls. Here, the peasants were compared to giant scorpions. They searched for the scorpion, but in vain. So, they clicked their tongues in despair. 
They believed superstitiously that with every movement of the scorpion outside the body, the poison would spread into the mother's blood. Thus, the movement of the scorpion could be fatal for the mother. Hence, they were searching for the scorpion to kill it, or at least to stop it from moving. When they could not find the scorpion, they prayed that the scorpion should remain still as they thought that it could increase the chance of recovery of the poet's mother. This portrays their mindset of surrendering to the supernatural power whenever the situation goes beyond their control. They said that the pain and suffering would burn away the sins of her previous birth. They also thought that it would also decrease the misfortune of her next birth by balancing total sum of good and evil in this unreal world. This is part of the Indian karma philosophy according to which souls are reincarnated balancing the good and evil karma in this world. Here, the world is said as unreal as scientifically the reincarnation theory is not proved yet. Thus, according to the poet, these theories are best thought of belonging to a world which is not that much real or best said to be spiritual. Karma theory and reincarnation belongs to the Hindu religion, signifying that the villagers or neighbors of the poet believed in Hindu religion. They also hope that the poison will purify her flesh of desire and spirit of ambition. According to some religious beliefs, humans are governed by the bodily desires and ambitions which are harmful for the soul. Thus, the villagers prayed that this poison will purify her soul by nullifying it. Here, the tussle between good and evil seems to protect the sanctity of human existence. In the next line, the poet draws a picture of his mother who was sitting on the floor surrounded by the villagers with peace of understanding in their faces. Here, an irony is used to describe the villagers' ignorance. Although they believed in the karma theory of life, the state of mind was not calm. As previously, they are seen searching for the scorpion as they thought that it may help poet's suffering mother. But when they failed to do so, they started praying and hoping that supernatural forces would balance the good and bad. And ultimately, all things will happen for the good only. Thus, this portrays the dilemma of the supernatural belief. Later, as the time passes by, more villagers gathered with more candles and lanterns. With these lights, Insects also arrived in that endless rain. The poet, in order to bring a rhythmic flow, repeated the word more several times in this line. It is an example of alliteration. This also portrays a natural picture of a typical rural Indian household. This line also portrays the close bonding that the villagers share with each other, as we witness how they all try to help the poet's mother in every way possible. These pictorial depictions are one of the important features of Ezekiel's poem. Meanwhile, the condition of the poet's mother deteriorated as she was seen twisting and groaning in pain lying on a mat on the floor. These detailed descriptions suggest that the child was utterly affected by his mother's pain. Among these spiritual minded people, there is only one skeptical and rational figure the poet's father, who, in order to save the poet's mother, keeps no stones unturned. He tried every curse and blessings, powder, mixture, herbs and hybrid, in order to cure her. He even experimented by pouring a little paraffin upon the biting toe and lit a match to it in the hope that it will burn the poison blood curing the woman. Witnessing the flames on his mother's toe, the poet frighteningly imagined as if the flame is a devil engulfing his mother. They also brought a holy man to perform some religious rites in order to tame the poison with an incantation. Here, we witness all kinds of traditional and modern approaches being used to relieve the pain, although the villagers don't even bother to call a doctor. Thus, it indicates how alienated they are from the medical facilities, which is easily available in any urban cities. After 20 long hours of efforts and suffering, she was somehow relieved of the poison and her life was saved. Thus, time is proved to be the best healer.
Till now, the poem portrays a story of an Indian rural society. The final paragraph of the poem portrays the intense love for children, making a universal appeal. Here we see that, after recovering from the painful torment of twenty long hours, the only prayer made by poet's mother was about her children. She thanked God as a scorpion stung her and spared her children, because as a mother she could not tolerate the pain and suffering of her children. Thus, she readily accepts all sufferings to see her children safe and secure. Through these lines, we witness the universal, unconditional motherly love, which is devoid of any social, religious, cultural, and regional backgrounds. Thus, in the last paragraph, the poem becomes universal from the very local Indian setting. This is one of the marvelous characters of this poem. This poem, Night of the Scorpion, is an expression of Nisim Ezekiel's childhood experience, which had affected him so much that he remembers the incident in details. The poignant and heart-touching poetic portrayal of a rural situation speaks about the Indian ethos with a touch of gentle irony. The poem is written in free verse, and it follows the style of many modern Indian poets writing in English. The poem juxtaposes the pain and horror of the unfortunate knight alongside a humorous depiction of the attitudes of simple and ignorant but concerned villagers. The depiction of supernatural elements highlights the spiritual beliefs of the villagers. The Indian philosophy of karma theory, purification and reincarnation can also be witnessed in the poem. The tussle between traditional and modern approach is also evident in the poem. But all these themes were outshadowed by the universal motherly love and sacrifice portrayed in the poem. The first-person narration of a child's experience adds a lively tone typical in Indian manner of narration. Thus, this poem is a depiction of India in its true colors. So, we have come to the end of this video lesson. Here are the names of some of the books from which I have gathered information. Thank you. Goodbye. Meet you soon.